Join the Shot Talk Patreon at patreon.com slash shot talk. You'll get access to bonus content, Q&A opportunities for future guests, and more. Thanks and enjoy. I think like the, the medium has so many places to go and um, you know you can do anything in this world. You can create anything, you can have, you can tell any kind of story through this visual medium. And um, it's being, it's underutilized right now, I think, that, I mean, it's, but it's still kind of in its infancy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Shot Talk. I have this week my friend, the esteemed Tyler Phillips. Tyler, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, Tyler, um, we go back <laughs> way, way, way back. I know a lot of <laughs> so so far, so far we've known each other, but um, you were one of the first guys when I first moved out to LA uh, who I really clicked with and really connected with. When you were uh, you were coming from Blue Sky, right? All it came down yeah. to Glendale. Well, well, like when we were in school together, uh, yeah. like that's that's when we first started talking a little bit. I that's think. right. We were both an animation yeah. mentor, right? Like um, uh, when I saw your work, I was like, "Man, this guy's really good." Re- that's hilarious yeah. because I was like, "This <laughs> this guy is going to end up in one of the." <laughs> oh, you! <laughs> no, you're oh, really you. good. <laughs> no, you're pretty. No, I, but I remember thinking, because uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody who was an animation mentor was like, yeah. everybody was having like. Going for the big three, like Pixar, DreamWorks, Blue sure, Sky, yeah, like yeah. those are the ones we yeah, wanted yeah. to get to. Yeah. So yeah, when I, I remember you did a shot mm-hmm. of uh, it was Animation Mentor, the rig mm-hmm. doing a mm-hmm. Christopher Walken line. I feel like a little boy who's lost his first tooth, waiting for the tooth fairy to come. Do you understand the concept of the tooth fairy? Yeah. And he's sitting yeah, in yeah. a dentist's chair, and I, right. I remember thinking like that was so expressive and so animated, <laughs> and I thought, oh, oh thanks, man. this guy yeah. is going to be in one of the <clears> those. The, the dream team, one of those top three <laughs> studio places. And funny enough, we both ended up at yeah. Hamburg, which is crazy. So, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you, I mean, you got there first. Yes, and, I won. Uh, you really, know, I won. So jealous. What can I say? Um, uh, you caught up, yeah. though, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, I Eventually. got there, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the way I got into DreamWorks was, um, like, at, at the end of my time at Blue Sky, uh, I, you know, because was, it was a temp job on Ice Age 3, um, I was uh, kind of looking at my options out there, and I remembered that you got a job, or I saw that you got a job at DreamWorks. Uh-huh. Um, and that's when I contacted you, and I was like, hey man, like, how's it going? <laughs> like, <you're, laughs> that, like, how are things at DreamWorks? Yeah, and um, yeah. do you like it, and um, do you know if they're hiring? And you know, just, it, it, you know, it's always kind of uh, awkward where you don't want to seem like you're right. just trying to like, you know, um, Take advantage, like take advantage, or, or yeah, yeah, like of a net, of like a contact or something. I think but, that's. Um, I think that's but important. But like, I though. really appreciated your work and stuff. I felt like we already had like a yeah. good rapport, so um, it's a sensitive yeah. thing. I know what you mean because I think I think a, a, a mindful person is like, oh, I yeah. don't want to feel like a, I'm a being a jerk here, but like, yeah. I think that's one thing that uh, artists need to be a little bit better at, like totally. especially really yeah. good artists. I think yeah, yeah. sometimes the most sensitive, yeah. heartfelt like animators are usually like the mm. worst at like networking or connecting to people. Totally, yeah. And, oh, man. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah. it was for me, it was no problem because yeah. like you said, we were already good buddies from the Animation <clears throat> Mentor. Sure, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember once you left yeah. some feedback on one of the last shots I did. I never, really? I don't think I've even told you this, but I oh. remember <laughs> I, I was, it was one of, the la- one of the last assignments I did on an Animation Mentor and, yeah. I, and I did an okay job, and I remember thinking like, oh, this could be better, this could be better, not sure, and you left some feedback, which was completely, uh-huh. like exactly what it needed, but at that point, oh. I had already gotten a job, so I was like, well, whatever. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm whatever. not gonna address these notes, but Tyler was right, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But Trash. yeah, anyways, delete. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, so I ended up, uh, cool. yeah, it was, ended up working yeah. out either way. That's so. awesome, yeah. And um, I remember, I, yeah. so I know you are at Blue Sky for a little bit, what, what do you yeah, think yeah. were the biggest differences between a studio like that, like New York-based, and yeah. then, uh, California-based studio. I, I think. I mean, the. I guess there's there's a different culture and um, hot dogs for, and pizza and, and <laughs> totally checkered cabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but the the people that were. Um, I mean, there were like the staff people, and there were kind of the the temps that were that were there that because we're um, we were hired on uh, for a, a temporary job that it's harder for the staff guys to like. Um, uh, befriend us, I think, and like kind of invite invite us out for like you know drinks or something. Yeah. But um, they some of them did. Like some of them were like, hey, you know, like let's do something for these guys. 
But you know, we were also in kind of a crunch mode too towards the end. So it was a little, it was even harder to like connect with people. It um, sounded like, like yeah. Blue Sky had a pretty tight group of guys. Like there was yeah, I think like their staff guys are very, club, they're right? really close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for uh, I think being a temp, it was also extra difficult. Like you, you kind of felt like you're walking on eggshells because you're you're trying to make friends with people. And then I'm, and you're trying to prove yourself as an animator. So yeah, so you're trying to prove yourself as an animator, and also that you're like a normal human being. Don't fire that would be me. good. That, well, I'm you cold. you want you want them to vouch for you, like yeah. when you know when they're looking to uh, pick their staff people. Oh right. Because there's only like four staff positions or five staff positions. To even be considered yeah. to be a temp at a place like Blue Sky, yeah, I'm sure everybody else there was mad talented as well. So that's yeah. on top of everything, right? Totally, like, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's this like, is the thing about animation, like it's really hard to prove that you're an awesome animator if you're never given a shot that prove it. Right. If you're only given shots that, um, that show that you're doing, um, if, you, if you only get reaction shots or something, right. or like a hand or a foot or something, um, no one's ever going to really know uh, the extent of your animation. They don't know your acting skills. They don't know like, you know, you're, you're, if you're really good with action or like choreography or if you're a technical animator. That's why every yeah. animator wants that acting shot. They want that sort of like totally. waist yeah. up shot where it's just kind of the <clears throat> upper torso and, and exactly, you yeah. get to show off that yeah. kind of stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any a little bit of an acting shot you know, would help uh, sell that I can do something and then maybe they'll give me something even bigger right. than that. Um, so you're working with that pressure and you're also working with um, the pressure of, well, I don't want to rock the boat and I don't want to you know, um, demand anything. I don't want to seem like... Um, uh, that you're acting like you're better than everybody else. Sure, sure. But you know, like, but you know, with all the temps, I mean, you are sort of competition, but you're also fr they're also your friends. Yeah. You know, like you're you're everybody was super friendly. Like you know, all the staff guys are friendly, and I think that it's just the way uh, the system is that yeah. you you know how you kind of prove yourself, and then also the 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 other side of that is um, trying to befriend people and like make that connection so that. You know, people can say, "Oh, that guy, that guy Tyler, he's a really, he's a really cool guy. He's really funny, and like, um, uh, and his animation's like pretty decent." You know, right. like I would love to Let's have that guy. Let's not kill him. We'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll not throw him out. <laughs> yeah, <window. laughs> we'll spare him from the furnace. He'll stay. He'll stay. Um, no, it's funny that yeah. talking about like doing sort of the introductory yeah. stuff. I think that's why sometimes every now and then you'll see you'll see background characters that are just yeah. super duper polished because. Yeah. It's done by either a temp or a new guy. Sure. So you'll have yeah. like sometimes a, a situation where, yeah, like there's extra tender love and care for a background character that nobody's gonna see. <laughs> right. But then that's yeah. important for the person yeah. who's like, that's his one responsibility. You know sure. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if I ever told you when I, when I was working on, uh, I was doing like these wolf characters for Kung Fu Panda 2, and yeah. I was doing like yeah. a jump, and, uh, and there was a shot animator who did the main wolf jumping in the scene, and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I gotta make these look you know, mint. Yeah. And uh, Dan Wagner calls me in and he's like looking at these two wolves jumping. He's like, yeah. So, you know, this, this one's okay. Except notice how this one has like a little bit more of an anticipation and like kind of make, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I actually, I actually did that one. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> get out, get the hell out so, of my office. Then. <laughs> that's but, great. Yeah. It's like yeah. that hunger from that. The new guy is yeah, like, no, yeah, I yeah. gotta prove myself. I gotta. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny that it's so hard to uh, get into a studio like you have to, uh, to to prove yourself that you're worthy to even be, uh, you know, considered to be one of the top five people, and then to get picked out of the top five people for to to get that that one out of two or three positions right. um, that's available. Maybe you know sometimes there's more positions open, but um, you know to to be one of the the, the 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 top of the top, to be one of the few to be picked, and then right. once you're the, once you're in, then you have to keep proving yourself to like get the better shots and. Um, and the funny thing is that a lot of people um, talk about internally, but maybe not externally, is that uh, even after every film, you're still kind of reproving yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some studios that are working on like one or two films, maybe um, you're rolling onto the next film and people already know who you are. But if you've, um, like at a place like DreamWorks, um, we're working on multiple films. We could be, we could have like three or four films in production. Um, uh, there will be people I, will, I have never worked with before, you know, um, so uh, when I finish a film and I roll into a new film, I could be working with people I've never worked with before and who don't know me, right. don't know my skill set. Right. Um, and so I spend all this time proving myself yeah. and getting, you know, lots of pats on the back and high fives and stuff like, 
you know, on one film and I feel really good, like, man, I, people, people yeah. like my work and it's yeah. so validating. And then you go to a film and people don't really know you and you're like, crap, I have to reprove myself and, uh, you know, and you may not be getting the best shots and then maybe that film ends and you feel like, you know, defeated. Well, and you have to go to the next film and like, okay, this film I've got to like, you know. I was going to say, I feel, I feel though yeah. that, that usually the way shows, and I could be wrong, but from what I yeah. remember anyways, when they're populating a, a new staff, usually the mm -hmm. Hoka or the person in charge of animation yeah. will go through all the demo reels. So if it's any, if it's any consolation, like sure, yeah. your demo reel is speaking for you already when you're walking yeah. into a new scene, right? Like That's that, true. That does I mean, count for something. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, uh, I mean, the, I think if, if the, the Hoka is doing that to, to pick people for the team, um, the, the Hoka might know your, your strengths and um, you know, what you can offer the film. I'd say like I've worked with soups that didn't even know I was at the studio for like the for like three years. Oh geez. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like there was somebody who asked me like, "Oh, you just started?" And I was how, like, how "No, I've is, been here for like like two and a half years, I think." How, how big is yeah. the animation team at DreamWorks? Like, oh man, right now. Um, so you know, we we've had like a hundred and hundred plus you know people before, um, and then it got um, over you know through various circumstances got kind of whittled down to like a 57 or something oh, wow. almost half. and then yeah. yeah and then now we've been we've been ramping up we've been hiring more people I think we hired like eight new people but, but then we lost it, it's 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 hard to get an exact count because we like you know somebody will want to be on the east coast to be closer to their family so then they'll go to another right you know they'll leave not not on bad terms or anything just uh they just want to be close to their family or you know there's a studio they really want to work at or Right. Um, there's an opportunity to be a supervisor somewhere, um, right. and they have like you know nine years of experience at, at DreamWorks. So it's just yeah, yeah, you know. However, they what was your what was the very first thing when you came to DreamWorks? Like the first shot? Of it? Oh, I remember actually which shot it yeah. was. It was because you got to put onto Dragons One, yeah. How to Train mm -hmm. a Dragon. Yeah, and it was a shot of uh, the girl. No, it was Hiccup, and he was doing a role. Right? Yeah, yeah. All no, it was all, uh, three of them. Uh, it was. Uh, Pick up Astrid and uh, oh sorry, um, it's like Astrid goes first and then maybe it's not loud. I can't remember. So now. it was an actual dragon and then, and then, and then Hiccup does the last roll but then fails because he's he's got a shield and right. like puts a shield down cool and then cool and he's being a dope. Yeah, and yeah. Then you actually and but then there was also yeah. a dragon. In yeah, the there's shot. a dragon that notices them and then goes after Hiccup and he he gets up and like runs away. So you want to talk yeah. about like trial by fire, like that's the first thing that they Man, give you. I, I was, yeah, so uh, <laughs> my experience coming, so like you said, like what's the difference from Blue Sky to, to DreamWorks? I think my, the feeling was when I got hired at DreamWorks, I felt like I was treated like staff immediately. Ah. And I felt like um, uh, people were super receptive and you know, really super nice to me. Um, even when I got launched on my shots, like there were like six people that came up to me. Um, I think like Michael Kiley and like uh, uh, like Yaka, like people came up to me and asked me, "Hey, if you want to shoot reference, like I would love to help." I'm like, "What? Wow! <laughs> wow. wow this play, everybody's so cool here." Because you're your um, dressed all snappy. Probably. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that yeah. too. Um, yes, the of whole LA yeah. culture of. Yeah, I mean, dressing. I don't know what you're talking about, but sure. Yeah. I'm just, I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. getting a vibe. I'm just getting a vibe. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's awesome yeah. that they were really warm and receptive and right, and, yeah. Um, and uh, and then even the first shots I got, I felt like uh, I wouldn't have got I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have got those shots immediately out of the gate at Blue Sky. It would have been um, maybe maybe towards the end of you know my time at Blue Sky, I would have gotten something like that. That's I think yeah, kind of the nature of, of yeah. the animation industry where I, I feel I don't know what it was like before, yeah. but at least this day and age, if you want. Yeah progress in your career you kind of have to leave your company go to another company and yeah. then you get res and then you get better treatment or you get her pay be excuse me sure you get, yeah you get better pay yeah uh, and it feels yeah. that uh yeah I, mean, I don't know if back in the good old days you just stayed at one company and worked your way up but yeah now it feels like you have to move if you want to like you know i mean if there is the an opening if there is like an opening for a supposition and you are really good and they already like you that um they there's that uh I think there is that opportunity that they already know you. Um, and I think at a place like DreamWorks, uh, they don't typically hire people for a supervising position outside the company. I think it's only happened like a couple of times where like, but even then I think there was still a little bit of a trial period before that person was kind of promoted to, to soup right away. Yeah, the, the, it's a big machine and they like to keep all the cogs moving as long, you know, just sure. disrupting yeah. that is kind of a, right. it's kind of a logistical problem sometimes. From uh, the company's 
standpoint, uh, it makes sense that if you're super talented and they can keep paying you a certain amount, uh, then they're getting a higher value from you. Right. You know, but if they paid you exactly what you're worth, you know, right. um, or more, then uh, that's not value to the company so much. So you, I think you're, in a way, you can be um, uh, closer to the chopping block. You know, right. your, your, your head is above water, and when much. they're looking to let people go, sure. you know, that, and that, that's happened in, in a lot of studios um, where, you know, when a company's looking to let go of people, they kind of look at the people that are making the most amount of money and it, evaluate whether or not their value is. I know that DreamWorks yeah. has had some guys who, who aren't there anymore, who've been yeah. there since fucking Emblem Entertainment days, you know what I mean? Yeah, I right, yeah, that. yeah. It's kind of what you're saying. It's like they yeah. were probably getting paid a pretty penny, mm -hmm. and when the company had to get lean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if uh, like some of those individuals had to piece out at that point, which is sure. crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's got to be that's got to be crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, um, <laughs> so uh, I always think about like, uh, you know, I I have to evaluate myself. Like, you know, um, why be like after 20 years or so? Like, why be um, like if I'm still an animator and not a supervisor or hoka or something and I'm making a certain amount that am I, am I in danger of <laughs> being like, oh, but I think that um, as long as you're, I, and I've talked to other people about this too, like, well, at some point, um, you know, with the raises and stuff over, you know, if I work there for 50 years um, I'm, and I'm still animator level or for anybody that's animator level, um, if you're still delivering like high value, if you're still um, giving, you know, um, uh, if you're doing really high quality work, that you're you're more, you're you're still valuable right. to the company, and you're you're going to be worth with what, what you make, right? Yeah, yeah, or what they what they pay you. What do you think yeah. was uh, your most challenging, technically speaking, uh, mm -hmm. shot that you had to do so far? Because you've been at DreamWorks for what eight years now? Uh, nine Probably. years. Nine yeah. Years. Oh, wow. my, yeah. My my anniversary is Mazel coming tov. up. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it, uh, it's coming up like uh, July thirteenth or, so, or wow, fifteenth or something like that. Great. Yeah. So really soon. So um, in those nine years, was there yeah. what was the biggest mountain you had to climb with? Uh, the challenge of like, um, if you're given an acting shot and you feel like, you know, the, it's on me to make this look really good. You know, like this is going to be on screen. This represents the studio. This represents the characters. This is, the, you know, you could, if you really think about it, uh, there's going to be a lot more pressure on you. Right. But if you just kind of treat it like this is my job, um, I want to do the best job I can, and um, and I think I have some ideas. And you kind of work it out, like what's going to be the best way to do this. And when you talk to your, you know, supervisors and people around you and say, hey, I'm kind of thinking, kind of thinking this. What do you think? And then you get you know, better ideas or maybe they love your idea and then you just execute it and just do the best job that you can, you know, putting in the right mechanics and everything right. to sell the acting, right. um, then, then you're good, right? But, sure. um, but yeah, so uh, I've had moments, man, well, I, I see what I you're saying. it's, no, hard, it's I, hard to think of. I, the, I see what yeah. you're saying. You're saying that like yeah. uh, maybe it's not necessarily yeah. the specific ask, but yeah. it's more all the things surrounding that. So if you're mm -hmm. getting, if you have a moment of yeah. real inspiration, and you have the support from your team, then it yeah. might be the most complicated thing in the world. Yeah. But but uh, but then if it's it might be really simple. But if you yeah. just don't feel it and it's just not working, but that, that might actually be worse. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yes, precisely. So I think that uh, there are those those sort of like uh, the technicality of the of the like creative process that 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 you know you can, you can bang your head against the wall. Yeah. On. Um, and feel like you're like, what am I doing at the studio? How am I? <laughs> you yeah. get the imposter syndrome. Sure. Um, and then I think there are the uh, shots are just a lot more technical. Where like, there's you know a thousand things you have to parent and unparent. And there's a character with like four legs that's jumping around <laughs> on terrain that's uneven. And and um, and then another character has to jump and like catch that thing. And then something complicated has to happen. And you're just like, how am I going to do this? It's going to take <laughs> so much time. Like. And, and I think for me, maybe that's like when it gets really technical, that's when I'm like, okay, what's, what's going to be the easiest way to do this? And, and that's what animation is. I think in the beginning, like when you're blocking out your scene, you, you make it easy for yourself. Um, and like you try to take the thing you know is going to be complex and you try to break it down in simpler parts so then you can build on that and then refine it and make it even like 
you know, make it a piece of art. I was going to say, so, so maybe it was yeah. like a, like a, qu a multi-legged dragon or something that was like seemed insurmountable, but then once, right, once yeah. you break it down, yeah. it's like, oh, all right. This right. Is... Yeah. Like the dragons are super complicated. Like, I mean, they, they have, have you ever uh, been in a situation yeah. where you kind of take a step back from what you've done and you're like, wow, I didn't even think that was going to totally, work out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There's definitely shots. Yeah, I can go back to my demo reel and think yeah. like, man, I, if I was asked to anima animate that again, I don't, I don't know if I'd... Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like, who animated this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Was there, a, was there a production that you, uh, in those nine years, that you yeah. liked more than... Uh, well, I'm sorry. Let me, yeah. re <laughs> let me rephrase that. <laughs> Is there one you yeah. that you didn't hate? No. Um, was there a production yeah. that uh, that you think you had a, a really good time with the team and sort of just like the overall experience? Man, I, I think I think the first Dragons was the best the best experience yeah. for me. Yeah, because uh, I mean everybody was super positive and super um, just energized by uh, the story, and they they knew it was going to be a great film, and you could just see like you know every dailies you know, was like a magical moment. Dude, and then, and then, You guys yeah. used to walk out of the theater. I'd be sitting there, you know, with yeah. Leighton having a, a cup of coffee, just <laughs> right. shooting the shit. And then yeah. it'd be the Dragons crew walking out of the theater and everybody <laughs> was just like striding. <laughs> like you guys were like, right. I don't know, like, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. yeah, like a football team or something. I was like, man, yeah. something's going on with this production. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. different, so. I mean, you know, and uh, when, you, when you look back on, you know, like, uh, those experiences with you know rose-colored glasses, like it's sure. it's much more like of an amazing experience. But I remember I remember that feeling of being on the show and thinking like this is going to be a great film. And then uh, even afterwards, like we after the screening, we had the wrap party, and man, everybody was hugging. Like uh, James Baxter hugged me, and like <laughs> I didn't really know him very well, and I was like, wow, he, he healed Baxter's hugging me. <laughs> Did he heal your leprosy after, after you touched? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you remember I'd been telling you how I had yeah. leprosy this whole Your time. Your ear was falling off, it. and then James Baxter yeah. was like... <laughs> yeah, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was, yeah, it was an incredible feeling. Um, and uh, it was only sad that when the film was released that it didn't do r well, like, right away. But the word of mouth, for sure, like, definitely got, oh, yeah. got people in the theater, and oh, then yeah. it just, you know... I mean, uh, you know, someone said like it had wings and it just exactly. like took off. So we talked about um, that before. Yeah. Uh, I think I was talking to Joe about that, where it's like, even though something flops commercially, yeah. anything of, with quality eventually finds its legs. Totally. Like yeah. Iron Giant and how right. Yeah. Giant. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. Even though they were mm -hmm. arguably bad in at the in movie the, theater. Right. Like, yeah. The, the fandom is intense. No. Like, it's crazy. It's interesting. Uh, you reminded me of. Um, uh, I remember there was somebody at work who who had a, a friend that was in um, uh, another department, like marketing, or uh, he was a producer or something. And they're talking about their favorite films, and he said, "You know, uh, what's your favorite film?" And he said, um, "Oh, my favorite film was uh, uh, I don't know, it was like Ratatouille or something because it made this much money." Oh, of and he's like, "Wait, so you think that the amount of money it made is like the reason why it's like you know good?" And he's like, "Well, it was very successful." And it's like, oh, interesting. It's inter because, like, for us as the artists, we're judging the art quality, not like we don't care so much about this. Well, we 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 care that it's successful, that people get to see it, and that it affects people's lives, right. and we can all love right. it together. Um, but if it doesn't do well at the box office, it's crazy that a, a large part of that is marketing and the time that it's released, yeah. and just like who, who's available to see man. it. You just never know. Yeah. Like, but that's that's very telling, though, that somebody would kind of show how their, you know, their yeah. real priorities that way. Right, yeah. yeah. It's, I think, yeah. I don't know, I feel like people always say it's art versus business, but yeah. I think that there are people who, because I've known artists that know how to sell things correctly, and I've known producers yeah. that also have a really good artistic eye, yeah. but, uh, man, yeah, but it's so true that most of the, that very often you run into the people who are like, well, I'm just attracted to this because it's mm -hmm. it's hot and shiny right now. Yeah. But otherwise, I could give a shit. I mean, I am too. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you are very hot and shiny, Tyler. As oh, always, thank you. Under these studio lights. <laughs> yeah. Point is, no. Point is, is that yeah, uh, um, yeah like the, they they it's a very LA mentality to be attracted to the luster and sure. not really care yeah. about like oh was the character mm -hmm. sincere was uh, did mm -hmm. he connect. On a, on a believable level that right. makes you yeah. invested and then want to see the sequel, which would make you more money anyways. So right, it's like, exactly, yeah. It all comes around anyways. So right, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's ironic that it's like, mm -hmm. if you yeah. just make good art, like it'll, yeah. 
you know, in theory, it'll, it'll sell, sell itself. itself. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. And and for uh, you know, we it's funny as as uh, artists, we forget how important marketing is. We forget like you know how important like timing is and and all that. Um, and then when yeah, when something doesn't sell, uh, it's or yeah, it doesn't do well in the theater. It's so frustrating. As artists, we we spend so much time, you know, like about a week animating uh, five seconds with one to two characters, right. you know, each as animators. And then, you know, the, the amount of effort and, Polish. you know, the, the, um, the time that people sacrifice in their yeah. lives to make these things. And then we have this beautiful baby. You know, we're like, I try to offer the world. Yeah. And, and marketing is the one that's going to advertise our baby to the world. Right. And, um, and then, yeah, for whoever's, whoever drops the baby, right. um, you know, it's like, it's so frustrating to, to feel like we spend all that time making something that, that yeah. is not going to be received. Right, yeah. right. Or maybe, may yeah. and all too often, sometimes yeah. it's not represented correctly with the marketing, which is... That too, yeah, that's which sort is of frustrating. Yeah. Very frustrating thing. I, I yeah. remember, um, I remember back yeah. when, uh, when Megamind was being released, and <laughs> yeah. I remember there was an internet meme going around where it was mm -hmm. like, they, it was a little stick figure meme of a guy being like, oh, Pixar, are they worry about characters and this and this and that. And yeah. It's all heartfelt, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And then DreamWorks characters do this and they did the, the DreamWorks right. face. Yeah. And everyone, I remember everybody at the studio was like a little bit like that. Yeah. That's kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but then Megamind's marketing uh, posters show up and it's, it's uh, it was exactly Megamind that. and uh, Brad Pitt's character doing that. Like, yeah. And it right. felt like, yeah, yeah. Are we just making fun of ourselves at this point? Like, why the hell <laughs> yeah. would we think this is a good idea? You know, um, but I think that uh, you know, for the people that that uh, whoever's in charge of making the decisions to you know, like raise an eyebrow or whatever, um, <laughs> I think it it makes the the character feel like incredulous or something that um, uh, like, that it that it like gi it gives the character like an edge or something that, right. that the marketing to like. You know, maybe to the, the the boys or something, we'll see that and think like, oh, that character is like edgy. Right. You know, like I, I want, hey mom, I want to see that. Right. Um, I don't know. No, I, I thought about that. that are made I've that, thought about that yeah. too. It, it does kind of. It is yeah. that very LA thing where it's like <laughs> we're cool. <laughs> like yeah. Kind of thing. And right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You want to see our films? <laughs> yeah. You want to see me do stuff? <laughs> we don't give we don't give a shit if you come, but you might as well. No. <laughs> yeah. Come see my film or whatever. Or not. I mean, <laughs> I, could, I could care less, as you can tell by my eyebrows. So, uh, yeah. so dragons uh, was yeah. was uh, you'd say like the strongest one so far. Uh, for like in terms yeah, of yeah, for my experience, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny because yeah, yeah. you know I, I remember when yeah. I um, the first movie I was on was was the fourth Shrek, and for whatever yeah. reason that also felt really, 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 really positive. And now I'm wondering yeah. if it's like is this like a first movie syndrome where no, I, I no, I had I mean like on Crudes I had a good experience, um, okay. but I was also working with Chris Andrews again, and uh, that was such an like easy going like um, they were like the directors were watching in dailies, watching every shot as though they were a child, like experiencing it for the first time. Like even Chris Sanders would like kind of do this, like kind of watching and just like, you know, like I swear, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen him do that with like his legs up and, uh, and then, and then just like, like bolt out laughing at, at something, yeah. you know, like at a joke. And, and it was just like, I love this guy. Like, he, like he's such a such a um, a child at heart right. that the, the way he's experiencing this, and I, I think that that's it's it's super cool. But he's also um, he has those moments uh, like in the the first dragons they, he storyboarded the um, the the forbidden friendship and the, the lagoon oh, um, where, where he has where to he like yeah touch his hand his... yeah and like um, he has to walk around the drawing that Toothless does with the yeah. with the branch and um, such a beautiful moment. There's no dialogue, you know, um, or maybe Hiccup says a couple things, but there's. There's just like music playing in the you know the relationship and how it kind of builds in that moment. Such like it's yeah. so great at these like little moments. I think um, I think that was sort of yeah. the the dynamic duo between him and Dean because oh yeah Dean, totally Dean yeah. had that uh, head for or has that head for structure and then mm -hmm. Chris Sanders has yeah. this has this like magical touch and I feel like totally yeah sprinkling <clears throat> that amongst a nice solid foundation is yeah you know we I know they worked on Mulan together they worked on yeah. the first Dragons together and I feel. I feel like yeah, they should have a like the band should get back together, you know what I mean, and like and do something. No, yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to see, uh, yeah, like if they if they did another film, 
Well, when you look at, um, <laughs> if they only did other films, like Lilo and Stitch. Uh, oh, right, yeah, Yeah, so, um, yeah, when you look at that, I mean, it's, it's, it's wacky and it's fun and there's a structure. Um, it's interesting to see their personalities are very different. And, um, but yeah, like, they work really, really well together. I don't know, it, it's been, like, every Dragons has been a, uh, a great experience. Um, yeah. Just, just a little different. Oh, I mean, so you're, with, you're just a veteran. Like, You've done all, th all three so far. Yeah, I've done all, yeah, so I'm on the dude, third one right now. Dude. Um, man, like, it's, it's still magical, like, yeah. still working with the same characters and a lot of the same people, the same head of character animation, Simon Otto, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the same people that I worked with, you know, from, you know, nine years ago on it. Dude, I, so I, it's, I remember, yeah. I'm having flashbacks now, I remember when yeah. the first one was completed and Katzenberg made an announcement or he told the company that like oh we this, this is, the, is the greatest thing we've ever well, done kind of he, he said yeah. this is the first time we've made a pixar film <laughs> which i thought was yeah. whoa it's like you were that self-aware to know that pixar is doing a certain kind of thing and then yeah. dreamworks has always been about the yucks yeah. and the laughs and sort of sure, being yeah. irreverent and stuff so we do, like that we do so. like comedy passes and stuff right that, that you know um Pixar might do too, but I think Pixar, the, 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 head, the heads, the, the, yeah. the brain trust and stuff is made up of people who are, you know, I think one person focuses on story, one person okay. focuses on animation, another on like, you know, uh, whatever, and they kind of talk about the things that will help improve the, the film overall, um, where uh, I guess at DreamWorks, it's, I believe it's like their directors and they, like they've invited like Spielberg, you know, for the Dragon screenings, which yeah. is cool because uh, some of the screenings like, you know, with the animators, like Spielberg is there, like yeah. sitting in the back, and you're just like, I never saw the I'm guy. I'm watching a film with Spielberg. Dude. I'm watch, he's watching my work right now. Right, right. It's such a weird, awesome experience. I, I remember seeing his yeah. car parked one day, and yeah. like a total fanboy, I, I left my desk. To just <laughs> you kinda, scratched your name. Yeah, I know. I was like, I love you. <laughs> I know, but I, 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 I was just like later looking around the campus to see if I could catch a glimpse of the guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know where he was, probably in a meeting or something, but. Um, yeah, so we had a meeting in the theater of the animators. So we're waiting outside. So we have an internal theater at your right. I mean, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's for right. the audience. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Kids at home. Yeah. Um, so we're all waiting outside, and there's something going on inside. And we thought, oh, you know, the whatever stupid other department's, like, you right. know, taking up the time. <laughs> and then the doors open, and then, like, all the directors were coming out. And it's like, oh, something important. And then Spielberg came out and stood, like, right here in front of me. Like, his, <laughs> his back, his, he wasn't, like, looking at me, but yeah. he had his back towards me. And I was like, wow. <laughs> like, like, right. I mean, uh, I don't like idolizing people, sure. like, you know, like, um, thinking they're, they're like, perfect, crazy, different, and crazy, you know, special, but, um, but he is, so, <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he's a god amongst us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you will. Um, so, uh, uh, but I, but just because uh, for, you know, Spielberg has worked on so many films that shape like our childhood, right. that it, it's it's just kind of cool to know like that's the guy, that's the guy that made these films that like yeah. I, things I, I I really appreciated and got me excited about you know, like Goonies and Jaws and um, you know Indiana Jones and everything he's ever been a part of that um, you know was really special and magical and um, yeah and the fact that you know he contributed a lot to you know the first Dragons and yeah to yeah, yeah so it's just cool that he, he was a part of DreamWorks. Uh, I, the first week that I was at DreamWorks, I remember I ended up going to a... Uh, because every now and then they show independent uh, screenings for sure, yeah. European animation studios, and they'll show them in the theater. And I was hanging out with, um, I guess, sort of the, the more uh, Spanish crowd uh, yeah. at, a, at a DreamWorks. And uh, for whatever reason, because oh, cause the guy I was sitting next to was, was from Spain. So we ended up going. Yeah. And so it was me and him and, and uh, I guess the other Spaniards who were on mm -hmm. campus... And I didn't realize that uh, Antonio Banderas was one of the producers on the short film that we were going to go see. Oh, so huh. he kind of like sniffs us out and is like, "Oh, look, there's all the there's all the Southern European types or whatever." <laughs> and he goes up and says hello to everybody in the group. And of course, everybody's speaking like super fluent, fast Spanish. Right. And I'm okay. I'm not like I don't yeah, practice yeah, yeah. it very often. Right. But uh, I was like, "Oh man, here we go," because he's working <laughs> away around the group and he's like, you know, mucho gusto, mucho gusto, and I'm like, "Sí, sí, muy bien, sí." Como no, see, you know what I mean? And like, nice. but yeah, he was like this really energetic, wiry yeah, guy. Yeah. And, I heard he's uh, a great guy and like, um, he was hilarious. He yeah. was super funny. And in yeah. fact, he, he yeah. <laughs> before they premiered the, the movie, they, uh, the director who's like this really soft spoken, se sensitive guy is like, I hope yeah. you like my cartoon about, you know, I think it was like a snake or something. Yeah. Uh, so please enjoy. 
And then Antonio, Antonio Banderas is in the back and he screams, and wait till after the credits because there's a naked woman. <laughs> and like, I started laughing my ass off. And right. then I felt like an idiot because everybody else yeah. was like, oh, oh my, <laughs> that's, that's not right. I, mean, yeah. that, I hope that's not true. <laughs> right. <laughs> but obviously, like, yeah. and then I felt kind of like bad for him because like, oh, nobody appreciated his outrageous <laughs> outburst. <laughs> That's amazing. But anyways, that's, that's, crazy. that's my yeah. Antonio Banderas experience, and, and yeah. yeah, seemed like a funny guy. So. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> like even uh, in the, uh, uh, the like the lipstick cam, like the the camera that's in the the recording booth for the, those that don't know. Oh right, yeah, the lipstick could, cam. Yeah, we have we uh, yeah. animators have access to the cameras on the voice actors. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so if uh, you're struggling with a a, a particular performance from the character, you want to be able to incorporate something from the actor, like how like how did they do it or the, what they're saying sounds like they're doing something with their body. Like, I want to see what they did. Um, like, Antonio Banderas was, like, super into it. Like, um, I think for, you know, when he was playing Puss in Boots, uh, I think he, he would, like, hold a, a, a pencil or something. Like, he acted out everything he was doing, um, which added, a, I think, a level of performance for his character. And not every actor does that. A lot of actors kind of... You know, they're kind of on their phone and they're kind of like, oh, yeah, um, hey, watch well, out. Well, I know out. we've had yeah. actors where we had to yeah. redo their lines because they were so checked out of it. I yeah. Don't want, yeah. I don't want to throw anybody under the Which bus. Is, right. But we ha I've but, seen uh, that happen with like a list I know, Hollywood. it's me. <laughs> Tyler, you know what? <laughs> yeah, you got a job, you got to do it. You I know? just want to animate. You know? I just don't <laughs> want to record my voice. <laughs> but um, they, the, the crazy thing is they're getting paid so much money to yeah. us. It's a lot of money for them. It's, uh, you know, it's the crumbs of right. <laughs> right. of the industry, what they could be doing, you know, they, they, they could get an Oscar for um, their performance in, you know, uh, Wolf of Wall Street or something, you know, something like that, right. but in, um, in, in, as, a, you know, recording their voice in uh, our films, it's, it's just Dude. like kind of beneath them. So, okay, so. I in, mean, in the whole Hollywood, you know, like level of importance. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny because I feel like since we talked about like how DreamWorks is maybe less it used to be in the past, maybe less yeah. story uh, priority wise, like Pixar used to be more story driven or this and that. Sure, yeah. I, I remember, and since we're talking about voice actors, I remember yeah. that uh, one of the coolest moments that I had on the Shrek 4 was when they had Leonardo DiCaprio come in to do the uh, lead for Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. And he, he did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's, he's Leonardo DiCaprio. Sure. He's, he's, a, yeah, yeah. he's an actor and everything. Right. And uh, you know Leonardo. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I remember that up until then, they had the head of story doing the voice of Rumpelstiltskin. Right, And yeah. he was doing a, a really animated, fun job. Yeah. And yeah. inspiring a lot of really cool animation. Mm -hmm. And I remember they've gathered all the animators and crew into the theater. We keep talking about the theater. Right. But anyways, they, they gathered the us. A lot, a lot happened yeah. in the theater at DreamWorks. Yeah, yeah. But they gathered us there, and they were like, we'd like to make an official announcement to the Shrek 4 crew. Yeah. Uh, we've made the executive decision that we're going to have and, and his name escapes me, but we're going to have the head of story on Strike 4 be the official voice of Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. And I remember it felt like it was like a rock concert. Everybody was like, <laughs> oh my God, we made a decision that was not like, you know, typical Hollywood decision. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we weren't going to have like Leonardo DiCaprio. We Leonardo beat the Cap system. Yeah, it's like we made In a your choice. face, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, in your face, Titanic. No, like we made a decision that was good for the story. Uh, re right, Despite yeah. the fact that like... Yeah. DreamWorks was stereotypically known for making, you know, more like market. using big names right. to sell the film. Yeah, exactly. And so that was that yeah. was a big win for us. I right. remember that was really exciting. Yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, a lot of people wonder they they wonder why we use big names to do the voice acting when they're they're not. A lot of them are not known for like their voice acting. They're known for their acting in films and and you know like in film they're uh, they're they're in a situation they they tell themselves as real and they're reacting to the person that they're you know, um, in the scene with, mm -hmm. right? They're hitting their marks and they're, you know, they're, they're putting on their characters so they're, they're acting, you know, they're, be, they're becoming something different. Excuse me. So um, when, they, uh, when they do voice acting, this is a very different, you know, thing. Sometimes the other person isn't even there. So they're like talking to, you know, hey, Shrek, you know, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't even think of anything. Right, right. But the, the, the other person... <laughs> That's all I got. Hey Shrek, what are you doing there, <laughs> yeah. Shrek? So good to I'm talk a to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think that um for uh these 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 actors that come in, it can I think it's a, a different level of difficulty for them. You know, where where people who are used to doing voice acting, like they, they know what they're up against, they know the their performance they have to bring to the 
you know, to the table. Right. In, uh, on Larrikins, we had uh, uh, this this one actor who was like amazing. Well, all the all the voice actors are great, but um, a lot of them were not like well known uh, uh, actors in in America. But right. it, but they're like their acting was insane. Like they had they you know give you multiple deliveries. Well, I mean that's what happens in you know the voice recording. They say, right. oh, can you do it like this? Do a little you know, right. more intensity, okay, less intensity, and we'll kind of figure out which one works out best, but um, for some of these voice actors, they know that, and they just give you, like, every range, and they're like, you know, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, to the cave, or like, uh -huh. to the cave, right. or, you know, they give, like, different intonation or different reading uh, for each one, and, and they're just like, man, this guy's, like, giving it his all, right, or whatever, the person's just giving it their all, and, um, and, and, and like, I think that kind of energy, that kind of, uh, they're, they're putting in a creative energy that inspires, like, us. When yeah. we see that, they're like, this guy he wants cares. us to be good. Yeah, cares and wants us to yeah. be good. I care and want this to be good. Yeah. And, it, you know, it just, like, kind of trickles through the, the rest of the totally. production. Totally. Yeah. I, I think it goes back to what we're talking about, where it's like, when, when you're new and you want to prove yourself, you, you have that energy and that passion. And it's, sure. And then once you sort of get maybe a little too comfortable... You start to oh, yeah. you stop trying as much. But that can happen too. Yeah, yeah totally. And, but, so it's yeah. cool when you hear about guys like Chris Sanders or yeah. or other people who are by by you know by any stretch of like they when you when you hear about guys like like Chris Sanders and people like that like they they are more than set in terms of like their uh, prestige and their sort of creative sure. like, who they are right and they yeah. still try and they still care yeah. and they still get excited yeah yeah that's, no that's great that's yeah. something that I think. Um, that's something to aspire to be as, I guess, as right. an artist, right? Like I was going to say, uh, even for you, like, uh, when you left DreamWorks, like, yeah. you, like, uh, everybody saw that you were, like, doing YouTube stuff, like, <laughs> I mean, in uh, your, I think, like, walking away from uh, a big name studio mm -hmm. is, is a really hard thing to do because a lot of us, like, we get our identity and our, um, our value wrapped up in, you know, that the studio gives us value, like, I can say, I'm an anime dreamer. Sure, sure. And people go, ooh, that's so fancy. <laughs> to leave that is, uh, can be really difficult to pursue something that you do. So I think it was, I mean, everybody that I know that, that hmm. knows you, uh, I think held you at a higher regard because oh. you just walked away to do your own thing. You're like, huh, huh I don't think I need this. <laughs> and then you're like. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I but, mean, that, that's... Well, and then, I mean, you have a lot of creative energy and a passion for storytelling and, like, you know, doing doing things that, like, you want to do. And I think that that's, that's something that's super cool. Well, shucks, Not man. to, like, like, you know... No, like, no, I mean, you. like, that's... It's interesting like, to hear that because yeah. I, I never... I, I, I mean, that was a very personal decision because yeah. I felt like for what I wanted to do, that wasn't the best fit. And, uh, and yeah, I have the utmost respect for the guys who... Like, guys like you who are still still at the grind and still, like... You know, working your way up and working on bigger. I better just can't things. leave. I'll lose my value. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's like yeah. it's it's a definitely a mutual respect, if anything. But yeah, yeah that's interesting. I I, I never yeah. really. Um, it's it's interesting to hear that after the fact that it was like, oh yeah, yeah. I guess I guess it is a pretty crazy thing to do. But yeah. to me, it was um, it was more of a yeah. I needed a, a I wanted to do a certain thing creatively, and like totally. that wasn't the space for that. So right, but yeah, but yeah, all that to say yeah. that like mad props to the people who were. Or like you know, that's kind of what this show. <laughs> honestly, that's what this what I yeah. wanted Shot Talk to be about because yeah. I knew I knew so many talented people in in the, the three years I was at DreamWorks, and I thought it yeah. feels like the world doesn't know that there's all these like superheroes, you know, <laughs> like in in the confines of this of these <clears throat> walls, and it'd yeah. be cool if there was a place where we can bring them on and, and have them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, share a little bit about that stuff. All their experiences right. and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, um, that's neat. When so, are you when are you gonna start doing that? I don't know. I figured I'll I'll get around <laughs> to getting a couple cameras and a couple cool. lights. Well, I'll let you know if it. I'll happens. look for. I look forward to seeing it. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so tell me more about your sexual <laughs> fantasies since we're not being well. It all in started with. <laughs> oh, so um, yeah. actually, me okay. So uh, also wanted to yeah. go back uh, a little bit earlier because when back when we were talking about Spielberg, yeah, um, I, I'm always curious about like. Uh, animators and creative people in general like mm -hmm. like what kind of films got them excited what kind of tv shows what kind of music like the stuff that makes yeah. you go oh me too i'm gonna give that a crack i'm gonna start drawing i'm gonna start Man, uh, this and that initially uh like i saw some behind the scenes of a 2d animator working when when i was young and i thought wow that looks like 
that sucks. Like that guy has to like draw that character over and over and over again. I was like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, um, I, cause I, I, was into, I was into like drawing like everything. I wanna draw like Metroid, I wanna draw, you know, um, uh, <laughs> Paddle Toads, I mean, there's a whole yeah, video yeah. game set, but like I wanted to draw like, uh, you know, Ninja Turtles and like one of the huge inspirational moments when I was young, like this is so dumb, I know I'm talking about this. No, but, listen, um, we all have them. So. It was like in second grade and uh, uh, like I could draw Ninja Turtles from the front only, <laughs> like just kind of like, you know, I don't know what their hands are doing, but they're just kind of out or something like uh -huh. holding, a, holding a sword or whatever. And this one kid uh, who was also really good at drawing, he was like a little old, older than me, he did a drawing of Ninja Turtle crawling up a wall from behind, and he was like, you know, like looking up, so it was like the, the backside of his head. Oh, shit. And, uh, and he threw it away, and I think I pulled it out of the trash and like saved it, and I was just like super inspired by that. I don't even, I probably threw it away eventually when I got older, it got lost. Wow. But, that, but that to me was like, I was like, you can do that? You can draw wow. him from a different angle? Wow. And that like, my brain was blown, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, or my mind was blown. And yeah. uh, I think from then on, like I tried to replicate that. Yeah. And then, uh, um, you know, just, just like the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, You're a little hobo um, artist digging through the trash. Like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Absorb the talent. Um, That's cool. But, uh, yeah, so that's a weird memory um, that no one will care about except well, for me. Well, I mean, it's weird yeah. though. Everybody finds the, the inspiration in the weirdest places. Like, I, totally, yeah. Like, the trash. I mean, <laughs> the trash. No, I, I remember, like, yeah, it was like my yeah. dad used to bring home VHS tapes of like computer animation, the most advanced technology. And it was just like spinning right. teapots. And I was like, what? Right. And it's just like a wireframe. <laughs> yeah, there's just a fucking yeah. wireframe or like the yeah. most basic shading. And I was yeah. like, how do Man. I help with that? Like, it's so, incredible. Uh, one of my neighbors, um, said uh, he knew I could I could draw like I was the artist of the family and you uh -huh. know my dad would you know awesomely talk me up like oh my son's an artist you know um, when I was you know just growing up you know I don't know what age that was that uh, yeah, I remember they bought you a drawing yeah. table I remember yeah yeah they yeah they, dra yeah, they bought me a drafting table they they told me it was for um, my mom's boss's son that were just holding it uh -huh. there and I was like oh man he's a lucky kid <laughs> and then I come Christmas they're like like so this is actually for you i was like what <laughs> so great and i drew like huge posters you know i buy like the huge uh, poster paper yeah and um i drew um uh like a scene from terminator 2 like terminator 2 was a first rated r film that my my dad like let me watch like i went with my dad to see and um i was obsessed with terminator i was obsessed with jurassic park so yeah i did it i did a whole mural of jurassic park with all the dinosaurs like you know, um, I was obsessed with raptors. They're like my favorite. Dude. I wanted to be a raptor is my spirit animal. Like, <laughs> it's like I, dude, I, I made a, I made a, a clay claw or I made a, a, a raptor claw out of clay. And like I made, uh, I designed t-shirts um, with puffy paint or I made a stencil with the, the bones of like the raptor. Yeah. You know, like this is a silhouette of the bones. Yeah. And then like made, uh, so I made that stencil and put puffy paint on it and like gave shirts to my friends and stuff. So. Um, I don't do know, you dumb. sorry? Do you remember the, yeah. when they had the dinosaur on campus? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that just it was randomly like a, walking around it yeah, during giant, lunchtime. I, I, yeah. I remember because uh, same thing with me. I, I was yeah. obsessed with that movie, and I remember I came out mm -hmm. of uh, the stairwell with Chris Capel, yeah. and we turn around the corner and we see what looks <laughs> like a eight foot a real dinosaur real dinosaur walking yeah. around the corner, and for the first two seconds, my brain was like, "What do I?" Dude, this is crazy. <laughs> like, I know this, they don't exist nowadays, but this is obviously like, a real dinosaur. You think dinosaur. back to Jurassic Park and you're like, yeah, what would like, the kids don't, do? Don't move. <laughs> Their vision's based on movement, so. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, but, then, uh, but then, yeah, like, you know, the, the second half of that first second, I'm like, oh, wait, that's a guy wearing a thing, but it looks yeah. crazy. It looks but so luckily good. you had a flare. I throw. did. <laughs> and then Chris threw one, like a dummy. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was like, over here, and like, ran to the bathroom and was eaten. But, so dumb. Yeah. Um, anyway, rest in peace, Chris. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so you're saying um, Terminator 2, Jurassic yeah, Park. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, so I guess those things like help shape my childhood and like the things that I wanted to do. And then I think uh, seeing that Jurassic Park was animated, like, well, a lot of the dinosaurs are animated in the computer. And I was like, what? Yeah. That's insane. And it like, and it's so funny that I've seen that. I saw that when I was, I don't know, 10, whatever years old, 10, 12. Um, and... Now today that I'm a, I'm a CG animator, I tell people I'm an animator, they, they say, oh, like, how long does it take to draw the characters yeah. or whatever? And I'm like, 
what? Well, I yeah. mean, it, it's a different kind of animation. I mean, we, a lot of us do draw, and we draw to plan things out, and sometimes we do drawovers on, on, or I'll get drawers from a supervisor on my shot. Um, I always you know, tell people appeal. that it's, it's like, Puppets yeah. in 3D. It's like marrying yeah. puppets in 3D. I, I'll say it. I'll tell them it's like stop motion. Like okay, yeah. almost like everything the same, just in the computer. You have lights. You have the camera. You have the character. The, the the puppets that you're going to be animating frame by frame. Well, you know, but it's it's an iterative. It it's a how do you say Iter iter iterative iterative a rare a titterative <laughs> titterative <laughs> yes yes nailed it's, it. Um, <laughs> I studied up before coming to this interview. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, that process. Yes. Uh, it's it's a, it's a um, process that requires a lot of um, iterations yes. uh, to to make better. So, um, like we're in stop motion, you might be going straight ahead, right? You you get to plan it out better in CG, and then you know you get to even change things. It's right. the beauty. It's a nonlinear you know, a uh, system or a medium right. uh, for, for making art. And, and with that, because it's even closer to live action, there's, there's another level of um, polish that you have to hit. The, another level of like, uh, you know, uh, there can't really be pops. Like in stop motion, you can animate on twos and you can, um, you, know, there, you know, you can jump every two or four frames and it's fine. You accept it for what it is. But in CG animation, well, unless if you're doing like a Lego movie and making it look stop motion, then you believe right. it. But if you're animating something and then all of a sudden there's a pop, it, it's, there's something that's a little disturbing or, you know, to the average person, they think that it doesn't look quite right. It's not, it looks unfinished. I remember, I yeah. remember back in the day, uh, Robot Chicken was pretty popular when I was at, on campus and I remember yeah. a lot of animators were like, that's so incredible because they only yeah. have kind of, it's kind of a straight ahead. They start at the beginning and they animate, they, they can't really correct and they go all the way <laughs> yeah. to the end. Right. And they were saying like, that's just so incredible that the animation is so good and they, they can't go back and redo things. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I was like, I bet you anything, all the people here who are sort of putting this on a pedestal yeah. could do that if they had to. I think a lot of, a lot of yeah, people right. don't understand yeah. that like... There is a planning process too. There is also a planning yeah. process too. And it's, it's, it's sort of that... Uh, you You're know, right. We could totally do it. I'm just it's saying, not like, that impressive. I think a lot of times <laughs> artists sort of yeah. uh, get down on themselves and they're like, oh, yeah. there's no way I could ever pull that off. I'm like, I'm yeah. pretty sure you could if you were sort of thrown into the deep not end. saying it would be good. I'm not saying, saying you could do it. <laughs> I'm saying they'd probably be a, a C minus, but no, no. Yeah. No, I'm saying like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you get thrown into the deep end and like <laughs> sure. they'll figure it out. Like it'll, right. it'll yeah, work yeah. out. Well, yeah. in the same sense that uh, when we started at DreamWorks, we were using a program that still had an architecture that was like in the early Garbage. 90s or something. Yeah. It, it was still really difficult to animate. There wasn't a play button. Uh, you couldn't multi-select uh, different parts of the body. You can only do one at a time. Right. You, you had to scrub your animation. Even then, like, you didn't have the face turned on. You had like a, a solid face with banded geometry, you know, just to, just to see what your animation looked like. You had to a, run a play blast just to see the timing of your right, animation. Just to that was and you'd a, like that make was notes up. for yourself. Yeah, exactly. To like go back in and change it and then hit, hit, make another play blast and wait to see the changes. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that and that was actually a huge step up from what it used to be because yeah. it used to just be spreadsheet based. Yeah, so like, right? so people, so for people <laughs> yeah. who can't wrap their head around like, yeah. you know, normally. So they hired a lot of tax guys to come in just like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it turns out if, if you were an accountant, you could get hired yeah. onto character animation just like that. Right. No. Um, yeah. So basically, <laughs> you know, the way it works now is that there'll be a, a puppet and then you yeah. grab the hand and you, and you kind of pose them using right. like a, your fucking like, mouse, right? Right. But back in the day, because it was so slow, there was a huge spreadsheet right. of just different controls. And it could, be, it could be as finite as like changing like the rotation of the top part of the thumb. Right. And you would have to num numerically punch in the amount of degree or the, the, the value to get that to rotate <clears throat> a certain way. Right. Going yeah. through like thousands of controls for a character on sure. a fucking spreadsheet. I know, which is I know. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and they still had the spreadsheet like when when we were there. Yeah, but, they still had And there were some people that still, that still used, used it. Still used it. Yeah, yeah. Some people were like, oh 90 degrees arm, you know, definitely, and the Y rotation, X degrees. rotation, negative 30, right. whatever. And then they just they hit update or enter, whatever, and the character is like in like T pose a... and was like, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. what the crap? Like, how did you do yeah. that? Yeah. It's it's a, a whole nother, another level of wizardry that yeah. I'm glad that we never had to yes. like do. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think but even I, still, it was still difficult for what we had. You know, it was still like a a lesser uh, uh, program for animating than what, like what we have today, which is right. like real time high res 
characters. You can have like 18 characters in a shot and like playing in real time and orbit around that in anime. It's funny how so, DreamWorks yeah. was so far behind third party mm -hmm. software like Maya. For yeah. years, it was just like, get mm -hmm. with it. And then mm -hmm. they completely blew past it. Now it's mm -hmm. like, to be fair, I haven't used Maya in a while. Yeah. But from that quick demo that you, that you showed me a, a few weeks ago, I, was, yeah. I thought, man, this is the, <laughs> this is the future. Like, this right. is crazy. Yeah. This is so right. fast and so yeah. in, like, uh, uh, intensive. Like there's so much going on. You know? <sighs> yeah, it's uh, pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. that, you know, it's... it's uh, <laughs> That that software was better than me as a person. I'm just saying it was a you know. It kind of is. I mean, when you think about it, just. You know, I'm not saying that I'm, <laughs> that I don't lag sometimes in real life, but that software was pretty impressive. Is all I'm trying. I mean, it gives life advice. It's it's crazy. It's like <laughs> it was on Ellen. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let me ask you, what what do you think? Uh, where would you like to see animation uh, eventually go? Because I know we, we've been doing the CG stuff sure, for yeah. almost 20 years now. And do you think that... I think, well, I think like the new Spider-Man that's coming out, um, directed by Peter Ramsey, yeah. is uh, I think like the, the medium has so many places to go. And um, I think that uh, it's amazing that, you know, you can do anything in this world. You can create anything. You can have, you can tell any kind of story through this visual medium, and um, it's being, um, it's underutilized right now, I think, yeah. that, I mean, it's, but it's still kind of in its infancy. You know, things, uh, there's the animation like uh, Peanuts, um, which I don't think did super well, but like, I, man, I love that they were trying something different, and you could, you could really push things within, you know, they were doing it, they were animating on twos and kind of making it have a stop motion, feel, or two or fours. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I know that they had a lot of the animators, if not all the animators, uh, plan out their shot by doing it in 2D first. Wow. Um, so I think even for people that didn't, that, that, that weren't really... Uh, Trained in uh, 2D. That they didn't really draw, yeah, yeah. much. That, that they, they were kind of forced to think of that very flat perspective. That's cool. And, and plan out their shot that way. It was, was really interesting. Movie. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking it was yeah. really nice. I, I uh, did you mm -hmm. see the Did you see the movie? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it at all, but it looked really cool. <laughs> I'm at that point though now. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. where I'm just like, that is incredible, and I will get to it eventually. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think movies like uh, yeah, the the new Spider Man that's going to come out is is going to be a game changer. I mean, yeah. I, I okay. So I hope it does really well, so that other studios see that and think, wow, we could really explore the um, instead of trying to make everything look and feel super real, you know, with high, super high res textures, you can see the pores and everything, but you, you just, um, you, you focus on making things more stylized and there's a purpose for that. If, if it needs to have a lot of texture, then there should be a reason for that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, or even um, the good dinosaur, like they're trying something different. You know, they had these like more cartoony looking design characters in a more realistic world, mm -hmm. you know, and for a lot of people, a lot of people didn't like that. And I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but, um, what I liked about that was that they're trying something different. Yeah. And I think it's, it's important that we're just kind of exploring different avenues of, um, of uh, you know, visually, well, I, I, that's talking about more of the rendering, but like the animation, if it's on twos or um, everything's played very flat to camera. Right, um, right. Or, uh, I don't know, I guess there's, I mean, there's things that we haven't, there's things we haven't even thought of yet. <laughs> they're just like going to revolutionize <laughs> this industry. Right, But right. I mean, like, it's just going to be... Um, it's, it's an exciting thing to be a part of. I, I yeah. don't know. I, I think that right now what happens is when, um, you know, uh, Toy Story does really well. So then, you know, other companies want to, you know, uh, jump in on that success using that as a model. Like, oh, well, they had characters that were rendered to look more realistic. You know, the toys and stuff. Even the humans at the time, they did their best to make it look realistic. And then, you know, uh, even with the last Toy Story, like, they updated the humans and they looked really good. There was some style to them. Their eyes are a bit bigger and everything. But, um, you know, th th they're still, I mean, all the studios are still kind of going for that. Oh, I'd say that, um, like, like Sony's doing some really cool super push stuff with, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, and yeah. Um, They've always been sort of pushing. Uh, I think yeah. even as far back as Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. That, yes. That made everybody yes. turn their heads and go, like, whoa. I know. That and, we're allowed to do that? That's right. interesting, yeah. Even the great thing about that is, or one of the great things about that that I loved is that uh, there's even um, like emotional moments where they're like, uh, you know, they're, they're putting on a front or yeah. something, and the uh, the other the other character, um, you know, calls out the other character like, yeah. it's like, why do you always do that? I, I don't know, but it's a it's a real moment. It's, 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 still, it's still hitting yeah. you uh, emotionally, even though it's 
really funny, goofy designs, right? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and even even the animation is still in that that uh, it it doesn't it's not nat super naturalistic animation, but you believe it because we set up those rules in the beginning. If right. all of a sudden they had like, you know, there's all this extra ambient, ambient motion, yeah, yeah, and and um, and you're trying to squeeze in all that subtlety, then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, why are they moving like that? Or they they, they feel a little too human in 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 these weird Too character weighty. suits yeah yeah and uh i think that's that's frustrating is when you have super pushed designs and then if you try to animate it like it's a real character right. that, or a real person then uh it starts to feel like a a human in a right. suit and it looks bad ironically i, I don't it like it takes that. away yeah. from the 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 emotional impact when it gets to like realistic, right. yeah. Well, I think it's it's disingenuous because you you like you, when you've set up the rules. Yeah, already, you set like up the rules. Said, like, yeah. yeah, look at these wacky characters, but oh, they move I'll very you, slow and they have a lot of ambient motion. And no, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say like some uh, that's one of the most uh, underutilized ways to get people to feel like really emotional moments is uh because I, I remember this phenomenon with uh, like even a goofy TV show like Scrubs or even yeah. you know what have you where. It, it was all a bunch of laughs and jokes, but then when it got real, because you were so, because you had already sort of lowered your walls, sure, emotionally yeah. speaking, right. when things get really sad and dark, it, it hits you even harder than maybe like a drama, right. a straight drama would. Right, and, yeah, and, yeah. And I don't know if it's it feels more forced. I think in a it lot does, of dramas, yeah. yeah, they're, 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 yeah, the whole thing is usually dramatic. Did you see? Did you yeah. see Coco? By the way, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. well, spoilers for people who haven't seen Coco, but <laughs> I thought that was yeah. a really brilliant example of that. Where yeah. at the beginning, the the Remember Me song right. uh, was done by the the villain, mm -hmm. and it was really hokey and really silly, and yeah. you were laughing at it about how how dumb of a song that is. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was like, oh yeah, this is so over overdone and so maudlin, so like, oh come on, yeah. And then they use that exact same song sung. At the end, when she's singing, when he's singing it to his great grandma, right. and it's sung differently in the, and it's in this completely yeah. different moment. Yeah, holy shit, dude! Like that, yeah. that was really effective. And right, I thought it's yeah. the same kind of thing. It's like you already got me to begin with because I'm laughing. Right, and now you're yeah. coming in with for the kill, and it's like, Ugh. ah, yeah, like that's so good. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's it's like you said. It's sometimes in a drama, <laughs> it's they're. They're they're trying too hard to get you to cry, and you kind of roll your eyes a little bit. Right. But yeah, comedies yeah. are are like the the secret killers or whatever. You know. Right. What I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, right. I think I think what's important is that uh, the the story and the characters have to feel like they're uh, you know they they have, it has to feel solidified like they're um, they're part of the same world. Like if they start deviating from that and like oh and actually we like you know if it's a, a, a drama and then you try to insert you know super cartoony moments or or it feels like it veers off then then uh yeah then it feels disingenuous and you it you know pulls you out of the the film or whatever right but um yeah so um yeah or even like dramatic moments that need to be dramatic moments sometimes are cr like forced into that it's it's really easy to make that a comedic moment right um so sometimes that that happens where uh, somebody goes you know it'd be funny as if when they're hugging, the dad farts or something. <laughs> right. And, and like at the time, you know, maybe everybody in the, in the room laughs, but it's a really bad idea because you're not thinking about the film. You're thinking about that one shot or right. whatever. Right. So um, that's, that's one way things get screwed up. That's a big, that's <laughs> a big problem in, in the process and the big part of an, problem in LA, I think, in general yeah. with movie making is that sometimes it's like, I just gotta, I just gotta be the star for this one meeting. I gotta be the star for like this. I gotta pitch the idea. I gotta sell it. Right. But then, yeah. but then, uh, you, that's as far as you get with maybe developing. And that's why a lot of yeah. TV shows kind of go nowhere because mm -hmm. they didn't think that far. They were just like, we just wanted to get this off the ground. Sure. Right. But we didn't yeah, yeah. really respect what we were writing. We just wanted to fucking get a deal. You know well, what I mean? And, so. Well, and then um, I think uh, uh, so. I, you know, I love comedy, and I love like. Uh, all this stuff that like uh, like what Sony's doing where they're like really pushing the timing yeah, totally. and like it's all for the comedy and it's brilliant right um, but I what I what I dislike is like like we were talking about when something's very dramatic and then they add they like force in something that's comedic because right. they know that uh, comedy sells better than like drama necessarily but like I mean I think you can still have well I, I, yeah like we were saying that you can have like something that's set up to be a comedy and have like a dramatic moment in it and just hits you even more. Yeah. 
like for that moment, you you feel like, oh wow, these characters are like real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having a real moment, and and it, yeah, it, you, I think, yeah, like you said, you're on board with it being comedic, and then um, that's all. Listen, man, I think that's yeah. all the movie is. I think <laughs> going back because I, I remember yeah. uh, even Jurassic Park. Looking back and seeing a lot of those scenes in that movie, yeah. it's a really stupid movie for 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 a lot of different reasons. Hmm. But yeah. the thing the thing that I'm trying to make, and it's still you're one right. of my favorite movies of all time. I think it's yeah. brilliant. But like, there's a scene. There's a lot of stuff that you can pick apart and be like, "Wait a second, yeah. that doesn't really add up." But the the point I'm trying to make is like, if a movie gets you invested emotionally, yeah. it can get to it can go to some pretty goofy, silly places. Sure. But if you're if you're on yeah. the ride, if you're on the coaster at right. that point, fully committed, uh -huh. you can get away with like not the tightest storytelling because you're already sort of emotionally invested. So right. that goes yeah. back to like, uh, you know, what we're talking about earlier. It's like, um, that's when you, that's when the emotions work is, is mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like the, the filmmaker has like the first act to get you there. Right. And once yeah. you're, once you're invested, right. um, then you can even make some <laughs> stuff that isn't, maybe, maybe is not even uh -huh. linearly cohesive to the rest of the story. Yeah. Right. But it doesn't matter because, <laughs> You care so much about the characters. You care so much about what's going to happen to the characters. Right, right. That it's yeah. okay. Yeah, and that's that's know? another thing is like um, some movies are more character driven, and I think that um, for for us as animators, like uh, our job is to focus on the characters, like keeping the characters intact, like they feel like the characters all the way through. Um, and I think that uh, for the film, the the story is like this, you know, that the the uh, the, uh, the terrain that the characters are going to you know travel through. And um, and the animators are responsible. Well, and the, the 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 writer, you know, and everybody involved in creating the personality of the characters is the uh, is the emotional connection. Like you're going to connect with the the audience is only going to connect with the, the the characters if they feel like they're genuinely reacting to their environment or they're right. reacting to the situations as their character. And I think that um, I don't know. Like I can connect with anybody. Like even even look at you know like for the Coco scene like. I mean, I'm not a grandma, but I can I can connect to that and for that moment. And I've never I've never written a song for anybody. Uh, and um, I mean, you know what I mean? Like I, I I'm not a part of that culture, but I completely relate to that, or I I connect to that in that moment. Like I mean, because right. we're human, and that's the thing is you have to connect to those human moments. Right. Right. Um, but yeah. So what I'm trying to say is like uh, the the uh, the important thing is connecting to the, the audience with the characters and that those those moments feel like they're genuine moments, and then yeah. you have the, the 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 structure and the story is the the thing that happens to them that that changes them, right, right, or whatever right. The, the way that they have to react, and then um, it's funny. And there, how, there's a lot more to it, obviously, but no, yeah. the, for sure. I, I think it's funny how like you you may have the yeah. most uh, airtight script where everything is <clears throat> is makes sense in the right. logical sense, right? But um, but then yeah, if if you're not hitting <clears throat> that the, that I guess tone correctly, right? It kind of doesn't work. But then, and then also, yeah. even if you have a movie that's a little bit more loosey goosey with structure, but it's not working, uh, then you start to notice all the all the blemishes. That, right. That, yeah. That it's like, yeah, that movie's yeah. really dumb. Plus, yeah, plus this, plus this, plus that. But yeah. like, imagine if, if a movie like Terminator Two was bad. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, plus this, plus this, plus that, but, right. but obviously yeah. it's successful, so you don't right. you don't focus on the silly little things that you sure. would otherwise. You know, yeah. I think uh, a movie like Crudes, like it doesn't have like a super complicated story structure. It's yeah. just like um, we let's just not die. I just want to make right. sure that my family doesn't die. And the the whole time you're supposed to connect with the characters. I mean, the, the people that that love the film, like they connect with it. They're connecting to the the characters that are like well, in their their moments of their they're, you know, like, Grug is, you know, like, the stupid dad and the, the stupid decisions he makes and how that affects him and his family. Um, and then, um, yeah, so uh, it, the, the film is more, like, character-driven. Right. And that's the thing is, like, uh, yeah, you don't need a super complicated story structure, but then there's a moment, like, the dad, you know, has to, you know, comes to a crossroads. Does, does he, you know, does, does he sacrifice himself to right. save his family, like, he needs to save his family, right? Simple, simple stories, I think, yeah. are, are sometimes more effective just because I think people in, in the writing process, they, they think that they need to be clever or they need to do something yeah. extraordinary or, or complicated. Yeah. And yeah, some of, some of my favorite movies are, are mm. pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah. like, uh, yeah, 
It's, uh, think about Mad Max, mm -hmm. the, the last one that just came out, or even Dread from 2012. Right, like yeah. Very, very contained stories right. that are really brilliant because, like you said, you're, they're making, you're, you're concerned about the characters involved and the right. motivations are super clear. <laughs> right. And there's yeah. plenty of stuff to make it complicated Yeah. as long as like the main through line is mm -hmm. pretty straight. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. I well, think we figured we, it out. We just figured out story. So, uh, Jeez. Guess yeah. our work here is done. It's that easy, isn't it? Last episode of Shot Talk, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler, thank you for being on the show. It was nice. It's my pleasure. My, yeah. I hope it was your pleasure. It was my, I know it was my pleasure. No, I think it was my pleasure. But we'll settle this once the camera. We'll have off. to do a. We'll have a pleasure off. Battle. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but thank you for being <laughs> on the show. And uh, we hope yeah. that uh, you guys got something out of this. And we will see you guys next week on Shot Talk. Shot Talk would like to thank the following patrons for helping to keep this show going. Please consider contributing to the Shot Talk Patreon. You can sign up today at patreon.com slash shot talk. There are all types of rewards like receiving episodes early, access to private Discord servers, and more. Also, if you're enjoying this music, you can follow me at inexpensivejew.bandcamp.com. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.